In this video, I'll uncover the best sweeteners on the ketogenic diet. Hi ladies and gentlemen, I'm Dr. Zorowski and welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, it's a pleasure to have you here. Be sure to subscribe, hit that bell notification, join our notification community so I can help you excel your health and your life. In this video, we're talking about the best sweeteners for the keto diet. You know, this is an important topic simply because a lot of people are turning to, you know, sweeteners that aren't good for the ketogenic diet, but also sweeteners that technically are zero calorie, but are also a little bit toxic in nature. And so we don't want to be consuming those. So anyway, we're going to straighten this out in this video. We're going to talk about some of the best ones to use. And of course, the ones that you need to stay away from. Now, when we look at the ketogenic diet in general, the best sweetener to use is going to be one that keeps insulin low and keeps blood sugar low. And that's simply what we're going to talk about, ones that do that. But what we're also needing to talk about are the ones that do that but are toxic in nature as well. So a lot of people go on the ketogenic diet and they'll use sweeteners like Splenda, Sucralose, and also Aspartame. Now, once again, these are synthetic-based sweeteners made in a lab and they're not good for your health. And so anyway, I don't ever recommend using them. But what you can use is some of the great ones that we're about to talk about here. First on our list is Stevia and monk fruit. Now, Stevia is a great sweetener along with monk fruit. Stevia has an antibacterial and antifungal property to it and stevia and monk fruit both have an anti-inflammatory property as well. And see you can see here that you know we're looking at whole food derived um, sweeteners that actually offer some health benefits. So anti-inflammatory, they actually have a good nutrient density that they carry. Um, once again, they're whole food derived. Um, they promote weight loss because they're keeping that insulin and blood sugar low, and they're also good for the gut. Okay, that's important as well because you know they're good for the gut. They support the microbiome. Now, when we look at stevia monk fruit, it has a taste to it. It has a flavor to it, an aftertaste, whatever you want to call it. And some people don't like that. So some people like to shy away from them and use more erythritol. Now, erythritol and xylitol are both sugar alcohols. Now, erythritol is kind of the third best to use while on the ketogenic diet. It is 0.24 calories per gram, whereas xylitol is 2.4 calories per gram. So you can see that xylitol is going to be a little bit more calorie heavy in there, but it also is going to have a blood sugar effect on you as well. It's going to raise your blood sugar a little bit, but it's still very minimal compared to regular table sugar. Now, erythritol and xylitol, because they're sugar alcohols, they can cause some gastrointestinal distress. I've had patients that I've worked with that literally can can eat tons of this stuff and it doesn't seem to bother them whereas some people even come close to it I mean if it's just the smallest trace in their food what they'll find is that they're running to the bathroom and once again lots of gastrointestinal distress so anyway erythritol is a little bit better than xylitol here but they're both sugar alcohols and they should be always used in moderation. You know, some people, like I said, can get away with using quite a bit of it, but once again, everything in moderation. And you can even buy blends. You can buy like erythritol and xylitol blends. You can buy like monk fruit and erythritol blends. And so when you buy these blends, it sometimes make it, makes it a little bit better to utilize them because you're not just getting, you know, all monk fruit, which is gonna have a flavor to it, or maybe all erythritol that, you know, doesn't have the flavor, but it's a sugar alcohol and causes the distress. So anyway, what I'll try to do is find some different blends and we can put, them in the description here below. So anyway, when we look at these different sweeteners for the ketogenic diet, be sure to make sure you're staying away from the toxic ones like the sucralose, aspartame, and Splenda, and then utilize these more natural ones that are going to offer you not only some health benefit, but also are not going to be uh, toxic in nature. So give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends if you haven't done so yet. And if you have any questions, put it down here in the comment section and subscribe to my channel here and check out my other videos on how you can improve your health. I'll see you in the next video.